So we got some pretty shocking news over the holiday break, or I should say we got an announcement of kind of an announcement that's coming any day now. The names of the elites linked to notorious sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein are set to be made public any day now, as Al Jazeera reports, and you can expect 150 connections to be revealed, or at least most of them. Now, by the time that you see this video, the full list may have already been released, but spoiler alert, we actually already know some of the names to expect to see thanks to the release of Epstein's flight logs during Ghislaine Maxwell's trial. This includes individuals like Bill Clinton, Donald Trump, Prince Andrew, Bill Gates, Alan Dershowitz, many others, and also RFK Jr. already admitted on Fox news that he was on two of two of epstein's flights but it was totally innocent guys he swears now to be clear just them being on the list doesn't automatically mean that they've committed sex crimes per se but doesn't warrant suspicion from all of us and necessitate a thorough and comprehensive investigation of everyone linked to him you bet your ass it does. And you should be consistent and support all of Epstein's connections being investigated regardless of their partisan affiliation. And I say this because not everyone has that same standard, but when it comes to what I think, if they're found guilty, regardless of which party they're from or who they are, they should be locked up and the key should be thrown away. Because what Jeffrey Epstein did was heinous. He destroyed countless lives and anyone who was part of that, who was found to be guilty and a co-conspirator, they should be penalized, obviously. I feel like I shouldn't have to say that, but unfortunately, I do. I don't care if it's Donald Trump or Bill Clinton. They could share a cell as far as I'm concerned if they're both seen to have been guilty. But true justice for Epstein's victims means holding all of the elites accountable in the event there's evidence of wrongdoing. But some Republicans are pretending like Trump isn't also implicated, which is not surprising to me, but it's still really infuriating. For example, Marjorie Greene tweeted, for some of us, it's no surprise at all that Bill Clinton will be named in the Jeffrey Epstein files. We said it a long time ago, but they labeled us conspiracy theorists. First of all, who's they? And no, they didn't, because we all know about this. There will be lots of names you've never heard of, and the IC collected info on them. Pedophiles belong in jail, not on secret government lists. Now, she she later followed up with this meme of Bill Clinton, which accuses him of having sex with underage victims on Epstein's island. And look, that's interesting, right? But aren't you going to address the elephant in the room? Don't you have anything to say about Trump's proven connection with Epstein? And doesn't that look a little bit suspicious to you? Well, after a bunch of people replied and asked the same question that we were all wondering, pointing out the obvious Trump connection between Epstein and him, here's what she had to say about that. The accusations against President Trump are fake. Trump kicked Epstein out of Mar-a-Lago. If he had anything to hide, he wouldn't have done that. Of course she thinks this. Of course. Isn't that convenient, by the way? See, Bill Clinton's Epstein connection is legitimate because I don't like him. But when it comes to Donald Trump, well, that connection has to be fake because I like him. So he can't possibly be implicated in any way, despite the ample evidence that he has been connected to Epstein for a very long time. I mean, listen, shutting the fuck up is also an option if you can't fight past the cognitive dissonance and refuse to not be a hypocrite but she can't help herself but i mean she's not alone she's kind of a microcosm of a bigger issue because there are many trump supporters that simply pretend as if trump had no connection whatsoever to epstein or just don't acknowledge it but if you're going to purport to care about this you can't pretend as if trump isn't also somebody who you should be looking at. And I say this because the connection between Trump and Epstein has been long established. And on top of that, there are things that Trump said about Epstein that are very sus. For example, in 2002, he said this, quote, I've known Jeff for 15 years. Terrific guy, Trump told New York Magazine that year for a story headlined, Jeffrey Epstein, international money man of mystery. He's a lot of fun to be with. It is even said that he likes beautiful women as much as I do, and many of them are on the young side, no doubt about it, Jeffrey enjoys his social life. Hmm, that's a little bit of a weird thing to say, is it not? He enjoys beautiful women as much as I do, but, you know, he prefers them on the younger side. That's weird, especially given what we all know now and what we've known for a long time, to be clear. But it's almost like Trump knew something, but he still thought that Epstein was a terrific guy who just enjoys the social life. Yeah, I don't believe 
that he's just completely ignorant or was ignorant to any of this. But speaking of Epstein's social life, the reason why Trump says this is because Trump was right there with him enjoying the social life. NBC News released footage from 1992 of Trump partying it up with Epstein at Mar-a-Lago, and you can see them chumming it up together, and Trump's even pointing to women that they're looking at who are dancing. Hmm, that's interesting, isn't it? Now, to be clear, this is not evidence of Trump committing a crime, but after 26 women have accused him of sexual misconduct and a jury of his peers found him liable for rape, do we at least have a reason to be a little bit skeptical of this connection that he has with Epstein? You bet your ass we do. Oh, and let's not forget about this. Um, Ghislaine Maxwell is in prison, and so a lot of people want to know if she's going to turn in powerful people. And I know you've talked in the past about Prince Andrew, and uh, you've criticized Bill Clinton's behavior. I'm wondering, uh, do you feel that she's going to turn in powerful men? How do you see that working out? I don't know. I haven't really been following it too much. I just wish her well, frankly. Uh, I've met her numerous times over the years, especially since I lived in Palm Beach. And I guess they lived in Palm Beach. Uh, but I wish her well. Hmm, that's also a little bit weird, is it not? Now, I also appreciate him just volunteering information about how he's met with her numerous times. Really convincing. Thanks, Donald Trump. I'm sure you had nothing to do with this. Now, to make matters worse, he was asked about Jeffrey Epstein and whether or not he thinks that Epstein actually killed himself in an interview with Tucker Carlson last year. And you're going to see him become incredibly uncomfortable and try to change the subject immediately. Take a look. Do you think Epstein killed himself sincerely? I don't know. I, I will say that, you know, he was a fixture in Palm Beach. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what Barr said about it either. I have no idea what he said. What did he say? He killed himself, probably? He said Is he killed way? himself and that they were going to do this investigation. They never did the investigation. It's never been yeah, public. Well, and did. they hid it. And like, why are they doing that? He and clearly do Barr knew. But why would Bill Barr be covering up the death of Jeffrey Epstein? Uh, Bill Barr didn't do an investigation on the election fraud either. Okay, He said he did and he pretended he did, but he didn't. Uh, but he didn't do the job there. Uh, I don't know what he did with Epstein, but possibly he did Do didn't you think do it's that. possible that Epstein was killed? Oh, sure, his... it's possible. I, I mean, I don't really believe, I think he probably uh, committed suicide. He had a life with, you know, beautiful homes and beautiful everything. And he, uh, all of a sudden he's incarcerated and not doing very well. I would say that he did, but there are those people, there are many people, I think you're one of them, right? But a lot of people think that he, uh, he was killed. He knew a lot on a lot of people. He was killed. You I think, think so? I think the more, the closer you look, I'm not a conspiracy person at all. I believe everything I hear. Uh, but yeah, the, the closer you look into it, I mean, the Attorney General of the United States, your Attorney General, yeah. clearly lied about the Epstein death. Yeah, and he was, why? he was, uh, certainly it wasn't well done. They had no cameras, they had no anything, everybody was sleeping, and you know, there, the a case could be made, look. <laughs> I'm not going to get involved in it, but I can tell you a case could be made either way. Hmm. Very telling. I'm no body language expert, but uh, his body language says a lot there. Now, it's also uh, very weird to me that Tucker Carlson didn't ask him directly about his connection to Epstein. And I mean, you can argue that he really didn't have to because that's the elephant in the room. And it's odd for Trump to not expect to have to address that when it comes up. But I mean, if you if you're Tucker Carlson here and you genuinely care about this and you're not just virtue signaling, how do you not ask him directly when you have one of Epstein's associates right there in front of you? Why not just ask the question? I mean, we all know why, because Republicans are fucking hypocrites. And there are a lot of liberal hypocrites who refuse to acknowledge Bill Clinton's association, but the number is much higher on the right than it is for liberals. Now, I do want to stress that I'm not just bringing up Trump's connection with Epstein for the sake of whataboutism or to absolve anyone else on the flight logs of any potential wrongdoing, but I'm saying that you either think all of these connections are suspicious or none of them are. You can't pick and choose. It's all really, really suspicious to me. But I'm consistent on this, and I'll prove it. Noam Chomsky, one of the greatest thinkers of our time, who's influenced me personally, was revealed to have been a longtime associate of Jeffrey Epstein, and his reaction to the revelation was even more troubling, saying it's none of our business. But guess what? I'm not going to just sit here and pretend as if this didn't happen while simultaneously denouncing other elites on that list. Noam Chomsky needs to not only explain himself, but there needs to be an investigation into his association with Epstein. You don't get a pass 
because I like you or once respected you. Fuck that. Jeffrey Epstein was a monster who used his wealth and powerful connections to hide the sex crimes that he committed for decades, and he destroyed countless lives. This is a monster, and what he did was pretty much an open secret. So if that's your buddy, at a minimum, you've got some explaining to do. But really, there needs to be investigations into all of these people. But I mean, I can say that about Chomsky, and I could say the same exact thing about Bill Clinton. My standard is the same, and it doesn't change based on party affiliation or my feelings towards Epstein's associates, right? So the question is, why can't Trump supporters like Marjorie Greene do the same thing and just be consistent here? You can still like Trump and agree with his politics, but say, yeah, I like him despite this thing, and I hope that he answers for this or explains it. But they can't do that. They can't. They refuse to actually say, yeah, Trump fucked up here. This is suspicious. I don't think he's guilty personally, but they, they just pretend like it's fake. Oh, the Epstein thing is fake with him. How can you just say that and still expect anyone to take you seriously? It's mind boggling to me. Now, furthermore, why aren't more powerful people concerned about this? That's a question that we should all be asking ourselves. And Republican Tim Burchett was asked about this, specifically why Congress in particular isn't more interested in releasing this list. And here's what he said, according to the Washington Times, quote, too many of my colleagues, I'm afraid, are compromised in this area for whatever reason, Mr. Burchett told Newsmax this week. Somebody whispered in their ears saying, hey, you don't want something to come out on something else. You better keep your mouth shut on this. That's exactly what they've done. Yeah. Now, it's not like he's telling us something that most of us didn't already assume, but I really do appreciate him confirming it and also saying the quiet part loud. But in conclusion, this is information that I think is important, and I think we all should care specifically because this information and the release of it is how you get justice for Epstein's victims. This isn't good because this is how you score some partisan political points. This is how you get justice. But in reality, I don't think that people like Marjorie Greene care about justice. They're just saying this because they're virtue signaling and they're trying to score some negative partisan points. I mean, this is the same person who was touring the country with Matt Gates when he was being investigated for sex trafficking as well. So she genuinely does not care despite her previous, you know, affiliation with QAnon. She purports to care about these types of issues, but in actuality, she doesn't. And I do find it really gross that like she will weaponize these types of serious issues where there are victims involved just to like score points. That's that's just so sick to me, right? But in reality, I don't expect Republicans to be consistent, and I don't expect any of Epstein's co-conspirators in either party to be held accountable because elites in this country are above the law. And they also protect each other, as Birchett pointed out. But, I mean, that shouldn't be the case, so we should still strive to do better. And I think that part of that, getting to justice, is getting these names released so there's public pressure for anyone who is potentially involved in wrongdoing here to be brought to justice. We deserve to know who may be involved, and any elite who is complicit in Epstein's sex trafficking needs to answer for their crimes. Now, when I say that any elite needs to answer for their crimes. I just want to stress once again, I mean any elite. Don't care if you have a D in front of your name or an R. I don't care who you are. I don't care if I previously liked you. Lock them all up and throw away the key if they're found guilty as far as I'm concerned. But I don't think that this list being released is going to facilitate that. But I do think that is that it is important because information is key here. And if we're even going to have hope of true justice and really closure for Epstein's victims, this is an important step. So I applaud the release of this list and I am interested to uh, see who else was involved with Epstein as well. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Cause Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.